Hallo zusammen! I think especially these days it's safe to say that Till Lindemann, the singer of Rammstein, is a workaholic, at least when it comes to music. Because, to my personal surprise to be honest, he not only recorded new songs with Rammstein, but he also did so with his solo project Lindemann, together with Peter Tetgren from Pain, a Swedish, well, rock, electronic rock metal band, I think you could call it. They both wrote 11 new songs for the upcoming second studio album by the project called F and M, or F und M in a more German way. It's gonna be released on November 22nd and they also released a new single from that album, which is called Steh auf. What is it all about? What could the lyrics actually be about? Which story could they tell us? Let's find that out in today's video. Steh auf will be the opener, while the track Mathematik, which Tillinemann composed alongside German rapper Haftbefehl, won't be featured on the new album, at least according to my information. I'd say that one rather seemed like a total solo song by Till in the first place, rather than a collaborative effort, together with Peter Tetgren, also because of the very different hip-hop kind of musical style. After the first Lindemann album, Skills and Pills, which was released as an English-only album back in 2015, the metal duo now seem to have switched to German songs according to the tracklist. I mean, I wanna be honest in my videos, and that also applies to this one, of course, so I'm gonna say that I don't really know what to think or what to make of that fact, that they also use German lyrics now. I sort of wonder Is there a big tonal difference, a big, a really, really big difference to the Rammstein repertoire? But then again, I think it doesn't really matter too much as long as the songs are great. Thinking about it now, actually, it would be really funny if they produced and recorded the third album in Swedish, of course, sang by Till. That would be something cool as well, I think. So before I'm gonna dive into the song Steh auf, what the German lyrics could translate to in English and uh, what they express to me, well, I just want to say that I haven't watched, I haven't seen the music video yet, on purpose. I know it's there and I will eventually watch it after this video, but I don't want to be like influenced or, I don't know, distracted is the wrong word I think, but I don't want to be influenced by what I could see there in terms of what my perception of the lyrics might be, my interpretation would be like, if you know what I mean. The first verse goes like this. Heute ist ein schöner Tag, am Himmel fliegen bunte Drachen, Boote schwimmen auf dem See, wir könnten so viel machen. Wir wollen nichts versäumen, wollen nichts verpassen, doch du bleibst einfach liegen. Auf dem Bett, dem Nassen. Today is a beautiful or good day. Multicolored dragons flying in the sky. Boats swimming on the lake. We could do so many things. We don't want to miss out on anything. Don't want to miss out on anything. But you remain lying down on the bed, the wet one. Already this whole first verse reminds me of Keine Lust, sort of which means can't be bothered or don't feel like it, meaning a lack of motivation while knowing what one could do. This becomes obvious even in the first line. The adjective schön could be translated as either good, a good day, or beautiful, a beautiful day. The lyrical eye seems to be part of a couple or a larger group of people, and even though the couple or group is well aware of potential activities they could pursue, The other person still decided against those. They don't want to do anything, at least it seems like that. They remain inactive and foul, lazy. On the other hand, they could be lazy against their will, but they don't know what to do in order to find enough motivation. You know, we don't really know yet. In a grammatical sense, the difference between the personal pronouns wir, we, and du, you, the second person singular, shows a certain close relationship and a certain distance at the same time. So having listened to the tune up until this point, I'm wondering what the wet bed reference is all about. I mean, I do have some ideas what it could refer to. Maybe it has to do with Oh well, you know what, I'm just gonna mention that in a few moments from now. 
I'd say the chorus in this one resembles a typical Rammstein type of section with quite aggressive vocals. Steh auf! Steh wieder auf! Steh auf! Steh wieder auf! Get up! Or literally, stand up! Get up again! Get up! Get up or get out of bed again! Linguistically, we're faced with the so-called imperative, the imperative form of the verb aufstehen, to get up. Typical for the German language, this verb gets separated into the prefix element auf, a prepositional prefix, up, and stehen, to stand. In context, aufstehen refers to getting out of bed, meaning to become active again, to do something about the situation. So here, the lyrical I, which doesn't seem to be as unmotivated or lazy, almost shouts at their partner or friend to basically move their ass out of the bed. By the way, the two terms bed and bed sound very similar, but the double consonant T, T at the end of das Bett sound a bit sharper and more stressed in comparison. Das Bett, the bed. The second verse goes, Bleib nicht liegen, es wär schade. Zirkus ist heute in der Stadt. Bitte zeig mir alle Tiere, hol mir Eis und Limonade. Wir wollen nichts versäumen. Steh doch auf, wir haben Spaß. Doch du bleibst einfach liegen, Augen offen, Wangen blass. Don't stay lying down, it would be a bummer. Circus is in town today. Please show me all animals. Get me ice cream and lemonade. We don't want to miss out on anything. Just get up. We have fun, but you remain lying down, eyes open, pale cheeks. That last line really made me think of something like a murder ballad or a really morbid strange love relationship between the living and the dead, or almost dead. Necromancy even. Might not be the case, I don't know, you know? But pale cheeks are something quite strange, especially if they get mentioned this explicitly. All of a sudden everything seems quite unsettling, beunruhigend. But then again, all this could very well be the link to the wet bed reference from the first verse. Maybe the lyrical eye hasn't realized, can't or doesn't want to realize the other person is a... Well... <clears throat> a Wasserleiche. A body of a drowned person. Literally the water corpse. Hmm... Let's wait and see. By mentioning all the interesting things they could experience and see, the awareness about what the lyrical eye is basically forced to miss out on grows even stronger. Especially when it's an opportunity that's only there for a certain period of time. Like der Zirkus, singular. Die Zirkusse, plural, the circus. So in a way, it's also a statement that could be summed up under the expression carpe diem. Nutze den Tag, use the day. Basically, the whole song is a statement about that, if you will. The lyrical eye even says, bitte, please, in the third line, so they really try hard to convince the other person, or they, they really long for doing that. That also becomes obvious in the third to last line. Steh doch auf, wir haben Spaß. Just get up, we have, implying we are going to have fun. The bridge might tell us even more, so let's take a look at it as well. Warum muss ich immer warten? Warum immer weinen? Warum all die schwarzen Löcher in den Armen, in den Beinen? Mama, steh auf. Leb wieder auf. Why do I always have to wait? Why always cry? Why all these black holes in the arms, in the legs? Mother, get up, come alive again. Well, they basically answered their own question in an indirect way, I reckon. Leb wieder auf in the last line would be literally translated to live again up. It's related to the English come alive, aufleben. In a transferred semantic relation, this whole context in combination with this expression also refers to the verb wieder auferstehen, to resurrect. The black holes, since we seem to be talking about a corpse here, might be referring to die Feuernis, the rot or decay. So with the knowledge I have now, having listened to the song as a whole, completely, so to speak, in full, all those things sort of line up with my theory, like the 
water corpse, so, so to speak, die Wasserleiche, or the wet bed. Or maybe it's not a bed in the traditional sense of the word, maybe the sea or the water is meant by that. I don't know if it's true though, I don't know if that was the intended meaning, but the song speaks to me that way. So I think that's quite plausible, at least for me, but maybe you have a different association with the song, with the metaphors in this one, and maybe you even have a completely different interpretation, different clues about what Steh auf bei Lindemann could be all about. If so, tell me in the comments, I'd really like to know. I'm a curious person, I love to talk about music, and I hope you do too. Also feel free to check out my social media and support links such as PayPal and Patreon in the video description down below. Thanks for watching everyone, I'm your vlog Dave, tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.